I haven't finished yet. Stop chatting. I'm going to tell you about the things and the people I love. I love me girlfriend, Peter Max beats and drugs. I love the simple things like just being away on a hilltop with me MP3 and a J. I love thinking about having me CD on display. I bet a lot of you are just like me in a way. I hate me job, but it's what I've got to do to get paid and traveling there. I love the things I see on me way, like the birds in the sky and the cars on the road and the words in me mind of a garden that grows and starts to overflow and paint a beautiful picture for me to memorize it and convert it into scriptures with the wittiest literature for Ricky to spit the facts cause life is what you make of it, you know what I'm getting at I love relaxing with me lass on a night time she watches Coronation Street while I write rhymes and I just love it man My granda was a gentle man understanding as well knew how to speak to people how to listen Fuck knows how he's related to me, ma'am. <laughs> <coughs> Lived to the age of 78 or something and I never saw him drunk once. Don't get us wrong, he liked a pint or two. Went to the club every week, every few days or so. But he only went for a couple of hours. Only had a couple of pints. He said, when I was 18, he'd buy me first legal pint for us. That's what I'm gonna do on my 18th birthday go to the creme where he's got a stone or something take some flowers have a chat with him i've never done it yet never been able to but when i'm 18 i will <coughs> then i'll go to the pub buy myself a pint my first legal one dedicate it to my granda take my first sip hold it up in the air cheers granda won't have more than two because that's all he would have had some of the other blokies Used to take the piss out me granda. Call him a lightweight and that. Well they would, wouldn't they? The way they staggered out after a lock-in, pissed out their heads, in their fucking 70s and 80s and still getting mortal. Me and the lads used to wind them up, watch them take the bait like dense fish. Stan, Stan, is what we called all the old men. <coughs> my name's not Stan, they grumbled, <coughs> them that weren't too deaf or too mortal. Tell us about the war, Stan. Tell us about what a hero you were. Tell us about how you only had one egg to last you and your ten brothers a whole fucking month. <laughs> Tell us about how many prisoner of war camps you escaped from by digging with a teaspoon six months non-stop. <laughs> they waved the walking sticks like rifles. Like they'd give us the biggest brain of our lives if only they could catch hold of us. If only they were 60 years younger. I mean, it might sound a bit cruel and that, looking back now. But all they did was complain about us, about how we were good for nothing, about how in their day they started work on the shipyards when they were fucking six or something. But our granda, he never once told us I was good for nothing. Not even when I taxed his tabs, bust his radio by chucking a golf ball I'd found on the fields at it. He saw us trying to put it back together again. Said not to worry. He listened to us instead of going on all the time. He couldn't change nothing, but he listened, took it all in. You could tell by his eyes, the way they looked too big behind his glasses. 23rd of July, 1983, Shirley Anderson gave birth to a baby, me, I was me mam's third, but the first for Steve Taylor, I was moving to the beat of the music, a week later I would sing to Bob Marley, Bob Dylan, and Motown, Rolling Stones, David Bowie and Velvet Underground. Me mum and dad's relationship was unstable and family members would try but they were unable to stop me and me little brother experiencing social workers and smack dens. It was fucking serious. Fucked up, I couldn't wait to get older cause it was taking us over. Still it made us a soldier and so I sit pissed off with the life that I had. Even though I owe it to holding this mic in me hand, I give it me best cause I could have give it a lot less and you're dead if you try to take what little I I've got left. I'm one of the canniest lads you're ever likely to meet, but I can only achieve peace when I write to the beat like that. I went upstairs to find Lucy, needed to talk to her, needed to explain. She wasn't in, either that or she wasn't answering. I walked past Gemma's room, still trashed, went to Gucci's, asked for my granddad's watch and compass from his chest of drawers. 
Went downstairs to the office, thought I should put them in the safe just in case. Sat down, turned them over in my hands. My eyes glazed over. I wanted to cry. I wanted to really cry. I wanted to cry flood so it never fucking stopped. But I didn't. Not with someone else in the room. <coughs> you must have been close to your granddad. I nodded. Kept looking at them. Kept turning them over in my hands. Feeling the metal. How solid it was. How old. He was the only person I could trust. The only person who loved us for what I was. Instead of going on at us all the time to do something else. Change into someone else. Maybe he's up there. Looking over you. I looked up. A dirty ceiling. Above that, the lasses double. Maybe. Back at the compass. Wondered about all the places it had been. My granddad fought in wars and that. India, Egypt, somewhere like that, somewhere miles away. His compass had been with him, helping him out, making sure he knew which way he was going. It might even have saved his life one time, taken the impact of a bullet like in that film. I turned it round again, looked for bullet marks. Couldn't see any. Maybe they had spears in them places, poison darts. My granddad had done things, lots of things. <coughs> I hardly knew anything about him, not really. He'd travelled, been to faraway places. He'd seen things, had stories to tell. My granddad had a point to his life. And there I was, three miles from home or something, in a hostel that was falling down, totally fucking lost. Thank you.